It's Dell Diamond Stadium in Round Rock, Texas. For the third straight year, it is the home of the 2023 Rogue Invitational, and the women's field is set to compete. Hello, everybody. I'm Sean Woodland, along with former Affiliate Cup champion Adrian Conway and Kiki Dixon on the field. Plus, we will be joined by the Rogue tailgate team of past champions and experts giving us their insights on all the action. This year's field has some of the top competitors in CrossFit, including Danny Spiegel, Danielle Brandon, and Emma Lawson. They will be coming after the 2022 Rogue Invitational Champion and current fittest woman on earth, Laurel Horvath. But the big story is the return of the greatest CrossFit athlete of all time, Tia Claire Toomey, coming back to competition for the first time since giving birth to her daughter only six months ago. I'm competing against the top, basically the top 20 women in the world because they invited the best of the best, which I'm very excited about. And there's always new implements. It's always heavy, so that's always something that I love to see. I have some tough competitors I'm up against. Ariel Lowen, Tia Claire Toomey, Laura Horvath, Gabby Magala, Laura and Tia. Everybody want to know who will win now. You know, she's won last year's Rogue Invitational. She's won the CrossFit Games. I'm not here to compete against one person. I'm here to compete against everyone. I really want to make sure that I go out there and absolutely give it everything that I've got. And Toomey definitely made a statement in the first event. Texas heavy and heavy it was. And she looked like she has not missed a beat. Toomey wins the event in impressive fashion, showing the world that she is back. Gabby Magawa takes second, and the returning Rogue Invitational Champion, Laura Horvath, comes in at fourth place. We wanted to know what Tia Toomey was going to be able to do after so much time off. It's like she never left. She showed us, Sean. You know, we, we announced yesterday, Tia Toomey is back. Well, she announced it for herself, finishing with 100 points, executing the way that a champion does. Event number two for the women. Seat at the bar, just two movements here, the log muscle up in the back squat. Yeah, it's, it's a wonderful combination. It, it demands that if athletes are going to excel at this, they've got to be well-rounded. It's 15 log muscle-ups into five back squats at 260 pounds, then 10 log muscle-ups, another five back squats, then five log muscle-ups, and they finish with five more back squats before they run across that finish mat. Here are the 10 women who will be in the second and final heat. Tia Toomey will be down in lane number one. We'll be keeping an eye on her, obviously, as she looks to follow up that dominant performance from event number one. Right away, we see Tia dropping for singles. One rep at a time, getting as much of her hand on top of the log as possible. A little sticky on the transition there. She's choosing to use grips. We haven't seen many athletes choose to come out with grips today, but of course, she's probably thinking for the events to come, the hand care protecting her skin. Emma Lawson in lane five ripped through six before she took a break, and now she's back to singles. Next to her is Laura Horvath. Horvath is through seven of these first 15 reps. 550.11 seconds. Once again, the time to beat belongs to Christine Kohlenbrander. Now Alex Gazan starting to move her way up and challenge Lawson for the top spot in the opening part of the second heat. And there is Emma Lawson now with three remaining. Yeah, and Emma's someone that we've got to keep our eye on with a, an event like this. The 40 log muscle ups last year, she was the only female to get through all 40 repetitions. She did get capped, didn't get, get finished through the finish line, but she, we know that she's got the capacity. And of course, now they've got to ex execute less log muscle ups than they did last year. Now, the strength portion of this is something that she's been working at. She showed great fruits at the CrossFit Games this year by making improvements to her strength, finishing in the top 10 in the total of the snatch and the clean and jerk. And we'll see what these back squats look like today. Lawson now with five reps at 260 pounds. Alex Gazan is the second woman in the barbell, and here comes Laura Horvath along with Tia Toomey. Emma Lawson is now done with her first set of five back squats, as is Alex Gazan's. That's the battle for the lead. See Lawson in the background, on the right side of the screen, going back to the log, as Tia Toomey working through her five reps here. Last night, Tia Toomey won her 11th career event here at the Rogue Invitational. She's competed 
in 22. That's a 500 winning percentage. Flip a coin when it comes to Tia Toomey at the Rogue Invitational. When we return, event number two continues at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. This CBS Sports Spectacular, the 2023 Rogue Invitational on CBS Sports is sponsored by Rogue. Don't weaken. And by Go Rock. We build the world's toughest gear. Welcome back to the 2023 Rogue Invitational and the action continues in event two, seat at the bar. Both Laura and Emma's judge with a hand in the air. Pretty much going rep for rep at this point. Laura was able to close the gap on those back squats due to her cycle rate being just a touch quicker. So she knows if she can probably stay close to Emma, if it comes down to five back squats at the end, she knows that she will have the slight advantage. So, you know, a champion's got those things on the back of their mind the entire way through an event. Where can they make a move? How do they need to manage the fatigue? But how can they put themselves in a situation to be successful? We got Alex down. She is phenomenal at pulling. I feel like she yes. has the best pulling strength out of the women in CrossFit. And it's really and showing that's here. something. Yeah. And she's not afraid to approach the bar either. Like, I didn't know that. Yeah, it looks wow. really good. Oh, wow. yeah. So that's what I didn't know. I knew she could do muscle ups. Yes. I didn't know if she can squat. And she is moving that barbell phenomenally. Time to beat up a right hand part of your screen as Tia Toomey starts her second set of five back squats. Toomey is now done. She's heading back to the log as Alex Gazan is on the barbell for the final time. And Gazan looking to track down Christine Kohlenbrander's time of 550.11 seconds. Now Laura Horvath has moved ahead of Emma Lawson for second place. Horvath on the left side working through her final set of back squats. Kazan is done. And Alex Kazan in her first career appearance at the Rogue Invitational has her first event win. Five nineteen point seven five seconds. Laura Horvath looking to lock up second place, not only in this heat, but also in the event. And she will do it as she comes in at about five minutes. Now 533.80 officially. Emma Lawson. Now with one rep remaining, and she's got to hurry to take third place in the event. So Colin Brander will be good enough for third and 90 points from heat number one as Lawson is done. Alex Gazan powers her way to the event win. Laura Horvath comes in in second, and Christine Colin Brander takes third. After two events, we have a first place tie between Tia Claire Toomey and Laura Horvath, setting up a battle for the championship. Emma Lawson is sitting in third and Gabby Magawa in fourth. Event number three, three movements and the killer cage is back. Final heat is underway. 32 calories to start here on the erg. After that, it's 10 reps on that 70 pound sear bell and then one lap on the killer cage. Let's check in with the rogue tailgate team. For this heat, like we've been saying that it's coming down to the grip on the uh, monkey bars. You've got to think of Laura Horst. Like her grip from all the rock, the rock climbing, climbing days. So I do not see this workout being a problem <laughs> at all for her. Laura making her way to that circus dumbbell at about 447 here as we see. We'll, we'll see what the gap is like that she's created now even coming off the skier. But one thing that I appreciate about this weather is it forces even a leader like Laura to have urgency. You just never know how slick uh, or, or how difficult that killer cage is going to be as you reapproach it due to the change in the surface from the extra rain. Laura Horvath is done and onto the killer cage for the second time. Emma Carey is now just getting to the dumbbell as Carey is in second place behind Horvath. Laura Horvath heading back to close out round number two. And now 
she is done. Tia Toomey now getting back to the cage as Horvath is going to start her third and final round on the skier again. She is just blitzing through this event. As Laura just makes that dumbbell look like it's hardly anything, almost push pressing it directly overhead every rep. There's Tia Toomey who's now moved up into third place in this heat as Laura Horvath is done with that sear bell and she'll head back to the killer cage for the third and final time. And Emma's got to know and be aware that Tia is very aware of every opportunity to close the gap and of course earn more points. So to feel her that close, she's going to be doing all she can to close the gap and run Emma down. Laura Horvath is done and Laura Horvath is going to pick up the event win as she will rack up 100 points and looks to sit atop the overall standings all by herself after day two, 10.48.15 seconds. Now here comes Tia Toomey, who has passed Emma Carey. Toomey has moved into second place in the heat and has a chance to get second place in the event. Wow. Toomey is done, and what a charge <laughs> from Tia Toomey, who will take second place in the circus and only surrender five points to Laura Horvath. 100 points for Laura Horvath. She picks up her fifth career event win at the Rogue Invitational, and she is with Kiki Dixon. Laura, congratulations on your fifth career event win here at the Rogue Invitational. Roman won this event for the men, and when I asked him what was the most difficult thing, he said the killer cage. Would you agree with that? Why or why not? Yeah, definitely. Like, the ski and the dumper is all about the cage, the monkey bars. The current Rogue Invitational Champion, Laura Horvath, wins the event. Toomey, looking impressive, comes in in second place, and it's Danny Spiegel in third. After three events, Laurel Horvath has taken a five-point lead over Tia Claire Toomey. Gabriella Magawa is now in third, and Emma Lawson sits in fourth. The action is just getting started at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. Welcome back to the 2023 Rogue Invitational, and we are in event four, 10th inning. Ariel Lowen takes heat one with a time of 16 minutes, 47 seconds. Emma Carey comes in 10 seconds faster at 16.37. Laura Horvath struggled with the event and finished 14th. And Tia Claire Toomey picks up the win, making it her 12th career event win at the Rogue Invitational. With the win, Toomey sits on top of the leaderboard, distancing herself from Laura Horvath, who now sits in second place. And a strong performance from Emma Lawson puts her in third. We are set to start the Duel 3. I'm Sean Woodland, alongside former Affiliate Cup champion Adrian Conway. we got Kiki Dixon down on the competition field. The Duel 3, what are the keys here, Adrian? This is going to be an amazing event. They're going to go over, under, over the log, and then, of course, they're going to get an opportunity to put the sandbags into that teeter for time. The key's here to go fast and take chances. They've got to be willing to be aggressive. In round one, Danny Spiegel takes the first heat. And in heat two, it was Alex Gazan coming out on top. And Christine Kohlenbrander takes the win in heat three. The action moves to round two. Emma Lawson will be working out of lane number four right next to Tia Toomey, Laura Horvath in lane two. And then it's Carrie and Magawa on the opposite ends of the field. Heat one is underway. Over, under, over. Emma Carey getting a little bit hung up on that second log. Laura Horvath looks to be the first woman to the bags, followed by Toomey Lawson and Magawa. 150-pound bag. they got to get it over that 45-inch lip. Horvath has two. Tia has two. Magawa's on her third bag. Horvath is going to win this heat convincingly. Lawson's going to be second. Magawa and then Toomey. And now here comes Emma Carey. Laura Horvath taking heat number one of round two in convincing fashion. And in Heat 2, it was Paige Semenza battling her way to the victory. Final round. 
of round two. We'll keep an eye on Danny Spiegel right there in lane three. We are underway. Spiegel up and over, no problem. Slides under, and Spiegel once again looking to open up a lead here. Christine Kohlenbrander and Ariel Lowen fighting for second. Alex Gazan and Danielle Brandon will be fourth and fifth to the bags. Kohlenbrander taking the lead, though, on the bags with Ariel Lowen. She's a little faster than Spiegel right now. Spiegel has caught up. Danny Spiegel on her final bag. Danny Spiegel in almost at the same time as Lowen. You got Kohlenbrander, Gazan, and then Brandon are in. We will wait for the official result because it was close between Danny Spiegel and Ariel Lowen. Oh, man, anything can happen in 25 seconds, Sean. Anything, I'll tell you what. Ten women advancing to the next round. Five move on after that, and then we will have the best two go head-to-head -head for the event win. It looks like they're putting the names up now for the ten women who will move on to round three. Spiegel, Lowen, and Horvath, no surprise there. Colin Brander's in as well. And Paige Semenza. Kazan and Brandon. And the final name, Manon Anganez. Satia Toomey not advancing. This is a huge opportunity now for Laura Horvath. Trails Toomey by 60 points in the overall standings. The first of two heats for this third round. Here are your lane assignments for this opening heat in round three. No problem on the first log. Everyone under the second. Lawson getting hung up in the back a little bit as Danielle Brandon, who is out front. Manon Anganez is going to be second to the bags, followed by Fisher and Gazan. And now Lawson just getting there on the left side of your screen. First bag in. Second bag in for Brandon, Gazan, and Fisher. Third bag in for Gazan, and it's going to be a race to the finish. Gazan, Brandon, Anganez, Lawson, then Fisher. Top five women advancing. And Alice Gazan and Danielle Brandon were neck and neck to the finish. Yeah, let's see how much faster Five in this times. next heat that Horvath and Spiegel go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and for the one, you know, for Spiegel and Lowen now, that will they continue to get faster? Exactly. Or yeah. have they reached kind of what the limit? We don't know what the limit is in terms of what's possible here yet. I feel like Spiegel's either going to set a new record right now or punt it into the stands. But I think she's going to take a chance. <laughs> I think she had that power slide. She's like, this is it. Why? Yep. I mean, like you said, why hold anything back? Let's go. No room for a mistake here. Athletes have to have complete tunnel vision. No matter what's going on around you, focus on the work ahead. Be where you're at. We're underway. Paige Semenza up and over, no problem. Up and over again, that other log, no problem. She's about neck and neck, a little bit ahead now of Danny Spiegel. Semenza to the bag first. First bag loaded for her. First bag loaded for Spiegel and Horvath. All the athletes on their second bag. Semenza on her third bag. Spiegel's going to win the heat. Semenza got hung up on the lift. Horvath is second. Semenza third, and then it was tight between Lowen and Colin Brander. <laughs> Couldn't script it any more exciting, let me tell you, from up here. Oh, my goodness. Who will come out victorious in the Duel 3? The 2023 Rogue Invitational continues after this. Welcome back to the 2023 Rogue Invitational, and it's round four of the Duel 3. The final five names have been put up there for round number four with the top two advancing. It's Kazan, Brandon, Semenza, Horvath, and Danny Spiegel. Spiegel will be in the middle of the field right next to Paige Semenza. Round four is underway. Spiegel up and over. She's neck and neck with Paige Semenza. It's Daniel Brandon in third, followed by Horvath and Gazan. First bag in for Semenza and Spiegel. Second bag in for Spiegel. Second bag in for Semenza. Spiegel's done. Danny Spiegel will advance. And now a race between Horvath and Semenza. And that could be big for Laura Horvath. She may have gotten there just ahead of Semenza. I got to say, I, I agree with you, Sean. I think she made it by a hair. I, I, it looked like she had the advantage there, Laura. Danny Spiegel winning once again. But at the very least for Laura Horvath, you can see how close it was. She will trail Tia Toomey 
by just 10 points going into the next event. We are set for the final head-to-head -head matchup between Danny Spiegel and Laura Horvath for the event win here in the Duel 3. Here we go, Spiegel versus Horvath for the win. Spiegel is out front, and Danny Spiegel looking to get to the sandbags first. She will. Horvath is there, they get the first bag in. It's neck and neck, second bag is in. Spiegel has a slight lead. Third bag is in, this one's gonna come down to the finish, and I think it was Danny Spiegel. It looked like Danny Spiegel, but we will wait, but that was about as close as you can get. Oh man, I almost pulled a muscle jumping around 21. up there. 21.75 seconds for Spiegel, 21.83 seconds for Laura Horvath. So Spiegel's gonna pick up the event win. Laura Horvath, the good news for her is she'll pick up 95 points and she will only trail Tia Toomey by 10 heading into the next event. Hey, Spiegel knew what she had to do, and she's been doing it every time she takes the floor for this particular event. She's up and over those logs. She's first to the sandbags. Now, there was a slight hesitation here at sandbag one. I don't know what it was, but Laura closed the gap. And then here, the whole entire event, Spiegel's been tapping just the front of that box, and it's allowed her to have a slight edge and advantage over that final split second over the field. And Danny and Laura Horvath are with Kiki Dixon. Danny, in between the rounds, you looked so comfortable, confident. What was it about this event that you feel gave you the advantage and confidence like that? They didn't strap a ruck to me. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? She also loves a sandbag. Love me a sandbag, yeah. <laughs> One more time. Love me a sandbag. She loves a sandbag. It showed. Congratulations, and thank you so much, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. In a dramatic finish, Danny Spiegel barely edges out Laura Horvath to win the Duel 3. And just like that, Horvath is within 10 points of Tia Claire Toomey with four events left, and Emma Lawson is alone in third. It is event six here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. It's the max deadlift. Adrian, I mean, there is just nothing like a crowd and the lights and heavyweights. It's really where magic happens, to be honest with you. And these athletes are gonna need every ounce of that magic tonight as they've been through quite a lot the first two days and into now the third day of competition. The weight started at 305 pounds and we are down to the final five athletes. And we move on to 395 pounds. And we're gonna make five pound jumps until we have a winner here. And that is good for Kyra Milligan. Amazing lift for her. She made that look the same as she did 390. Now Toomey to close things out here at 400 pounds. Let's check in with the Rogue Tailgate team. winner right now like yep. this is freaking me out <laughs> this her is too. insane what she is doing not even like allowing ourselves to be happy Ooh. for a moment just right back to business Dude, we're at the office right there now doing some bars work to be yep. lifted. Laura Horvath 415 past the knees and Horvath has it wow that might be the most impressive deadlift we've seen here tonight, honestly. The, the time that it took and the focus that she was able to sustain a firm body posture, no rounding of her back, and fight through those sticking points that started to present themselves, that is impressive. Spiegel at 420. No problem getting it to her knees, and now can she hitch it up? She can indeed, and Danny Spiegel We'll hit 420. Wow. Great lift there by Danny. She's definitely getting towards the end of her threshold. You can tell that lift took a lot more out of her than the previous ones that we've seen here tonight. Great lift there by Spiegel. Kazan for the win. Easy money. 
425 is good for Alice Kazan, and she takes home the event victory. We talked about her having some natural advantages for the deadlift, the long arms, great setup position, and she excelled tonight under the lights. Alex Gazan gets her second event win in the competition. Danny Spiegel takes second, and Horvath comes in third. And things are getting interesting with only three events left. Toomey holds a five-point lead over Horvath, and Gabby Magawa inching up to Emma Lawson for a seat on the podium. We are at Dell Diamond Stadium in Round Rock, Texas for the 2023 Rogue Invitational. Adrian, tight race on top of the overall standings for the women, and it is delivering as promised. It is delivering as promised. Listen, we've been battling the weather, but these women have been battling each other event by event. It is close at the very top with Tia Claire Toomey, five points still ahead of Laura Horvath. But then we've got a lot of close races that are going to be taking place as these women are going to be fighting tooth and nail to get onto the podium. The rain continues to come down here at Dell Diamond Stadium as we are set for heat number two for the women in event seven, Hulk hands. Some things have changed here. Instead of the 75 foot front rack lunge, they're gonna do 20 stationary lunges with those fat bells. Laura Horvath and Tia Toomey will be right next to each other in lanes five and six. That is the battle we have been watching all week long and they currently sit in one and two in the overall standings. Toomey with just a five point lead over Laura Horvath and we start with the 30 calories. There are leaders, Tia and Laura, and Laura's an athlete that we've got to keep an eye out on. Hey, it's one thing for us to say it, but to watch these athletes do it, they train for the unknown and unknowable, right? Hey, this is certainly an element that many feel unprepared for. Have you ever picked up an apparatus when it's wet? Do you feel like psychologically and emotionally you can adjust to that? These are all things that are being tested right now as we watch these athletes take the field. Now Horvath and Magawa advancing to the Fat Bells along with Lawson and Anganese. Here comes Emma Carey. Now 20 ground overhead, 50 pounds in each hand. Alex Gazan is off, Danny Spiegel as well. That's good for Laura Horvath as some people are getting between her and Tia Toomey right now. Let's check in with the Rogue Tailgate team. I think you gotta pace this one right though. You could, you could definitely come out too hot, too fast, and, and just and lose it, right? Yep. But if you, if you find the right pace off the bat, start a little slower, throttle that back a little bit, and then start to gradually gain, that's typically going to be the right game plan in these types of workouts. Don't worry about winning the first bike. I mean, <laughs> you do and you don't, right? You do and you don't. Well, and even these, uh, this first set of 20 on the ground overhead, you saw, you know, it's easy to do a, a big first set Ooh, Laura, and then drop the down to yeah. twos. Oh, Laura knows what she has to That's do. That's like 40 or 50 seconds ahead of the split from Brandon and Rolf in the first, uh, wow. first team. So, you know, this is where we wonder, is it too fast? Yeah. I'm going to say no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Horvath is done. And Tia Toomey, meanwhile, is starting to gain some ground. She was one of the last women to get off the bike and right now sits in fifth place in the heat as Horvath makes her way to Modder Hill. You get this far behind an athlete like Laura Horvath in an event like this, and there, there's no making up that ground. And that bag, again, 100 pounds, that's 45 kilos, but probably soaked up with some water <laughs> there that's added a little bit of weight. But Horvath is managing that okay. Now here comes Emma Lawson and Menon Anganese. Tia Toomey has also made her way to the hill. And Horvath smartly, I don't know if that was on purpose or not, but she decided to slide down the hill. And all Horvath needs to do to erase the remainder of the lead that Toomey has on her is just beat her in this event. Now, Toomey has moved into third place behind Gabby Magawa. And here comes Emma Lawson right behind Toomey. And a lot of them, of course, pace that run on the back half so that they know they can pick up these fat bells and go 20 unbroken with the lunges. Emma Lawson trying to hang on to that third spot on the podium. Right now sits in fourth place. When Magawa and Horvath each have four reps remaining. The final two for Laurel Horvath. And now she gets to move back to the bike for 30 final calories. Alex Gazan has moved in front of Tia Toomey. Gabby Magawa is back onto the bike. Magawa and Horvath need to get to the 111 rep mark. 
now Toomey just getting onto the bike. And this is where, Sean, psychologically you got to be you got to be strong. You've got to be capable of continuing to stay uncomfortable and build intensity through the finish. Final three calories for Laura Horvath, and she's looking to smash Emily Rolfe's top time of 12.16 and pick up her second event win of the Rogue Invitational. And Laura Horvath is your new leader with two events left. 10.43.99 seconds. And now Gabby Magawa is in. Toomey's off. The Toomey's going to take fifth place in the event. Laura Horbath should have a 15-point lead on Toomey with two events remaining. With that performance, Laura Horbath wins the event. Gabby Magawa takes second, and Alex Gazan finishes strong in third. And with just two events left, Horvath has retaken the lead and is now 15 points over second place, Tia Toomey. Gabby Magawa has now overtaken Emma Lawson for the last spot on the podium. Only two events remain before we crown a champion as the 2023 Rogue Invitational continues. Welcome back to the 2023 Rogue Invitational and event eight, Big Cat has begun. A mix of box jumps and handstand walks with a nine minute time cap. Danielle Brandon wins the event as the only athlete to finish inside seven minutes. Tia Claire Toomey takes second place and it's Paige Powers in third. And with that, we have a tie for first place going into the final event and it will be winner take all at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. We are down to the final event here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. The weather continues to be a problem here in Round Rock, Texas. And as a result, we're not going to be on the field anymore. We are going to head indoors. And this is going to be an old fashioned, gritty CrossFit throwdown in event number nine. It is the cleanup. And Adrian, you could not have scripted this any better for the women. It is winner take all as far as the podium is concerned here in the final event. That's right. This is exactly what we all hope to see. And the weather has been something that we've all had to adapt to. And that's what champions do, Sean. They adapt to a change in schedule. They adapt to different events. They adapt to different locations. And that's where we find ourselves now for this final. Laura Horvath against Tia Claire Toomey. Winner take all. In heat one, it was Kyra Milligan taking the top spot. And it's Paige Powers, who is victorious in heat two. Lane assignments for this third of four heats. Danny Spiegel, Ariel Lowen, Emma Carey, Danielle Brandon, and Manon Anganese. And we have a moderately loaded barbell. Danny Spiegel's going to love that. The fans now are right on top of the action as we begin with the 25 double unders. And we'll move into five power cleans at 155. Three rounds of that as Emma Carey and Ariel Lowen look to be the first two to the barbell. We see one athlete doing touch and go. That's Danny Spiegel to the left of your screen where she keeps her hands on the bar, guides it to the ground, and guides it back to that front rack position every repetition. She must have got her jump rope caught up on her. And, that, and that, that's a significant amount of time that that can cost you if you have those type of slip ups throughout the, the event there. You want it to stay right where it goes and put it down where you want it to be every time. Spiegel is in the lead, but Ariel alone is right behind her along with Emma Carey. She is done, and Danny Spiegel and Danielle Brandon, along with Lowen and Carey, moving back to the barbell. Spiegel looking to go touch and go on all five of these reps. And she is done, and she'll go back to the jump rope. Final round here of the power cleans. So the 90 rep mark is when she will then move into the two rounds that involve the squat cleans with that 155 pound barbell. Brandon Agonese and Ariel Lowen all to the jump rope at the same time to start their third rounds. Emma Carey right now, fifth place in the heat. Spiegel is done. Five more power cleans. She's bought herself about a four second lead on the field right now, but we see her starting to drop the bar. 
and you, and you don't know, Sean, if she started touch and go, and now this isn't by choice, if she didn't intend to start breaking up these reps, now they're taking her too long in the form of singles. Some of these ladies who executed singles early might start to be able to close the gap and catch her now into the two rounds of 25 and five squat cleans. Spiegel still in the lead, back to the jump row. Now Danielle Brandon and Ariel Lowen right behind her. And Manon Anganese starting to move up as well. Four minutes, 33 seconds unofficially. That's about the fastest time that we have seen from both Kyra Milligan and Paige Powers was close to that in the prior heat. And already we see Brandon take a slight lead now. Spiegel and Brandon are neck and neck. Brandon just has to just take the lead. She might have gone touch and goes. I, I want, I to, want see to see. It. Let's see what she does on this barbell. Oh, they're going to stick that with her be, now. Yeah. If she goes touch and go, she is about to put up a massive. Oh, that's oh. fast. If She's she goes got a right fast down, time. Stomping. She goes right down to the floor. Oh, my floor. gosh. Wow. I love Just it. Regret. Nice. Amazing. This is going to be a phenomenal time. Oh, my time. God. She, she is making herself suffer. Yeah. Yes. I love it, though. She's just going for it. And look at how clean she is with her oh. transition. She backs right into the spot where she's going to start she's her double unders. She's also very good at double unders. One round now of double unders and clean and jerks. Oh, and Brandon was called back. She had a no rep on a double under. She was almost at the barbell, had to go back again. And one thing's for sure, she's great at power cleans. She actually struggles more from the squat and her overhead position, her jerk position as she finishes each one of these reps is superior to many of the athletes in the field. Very secure. If she continues to finish with her legs, she's going to finish with a solid, solid time. Now, Danielle Brandon has a chance to set the top mark heading into the final heat. She is coming off an event win in Big Cat earlier. She's got to regroup, risking missing a rep here. Danny Spiegel with one rep remaining. Brandon is in, 427 unofficially for her. 426.62 seconds as Spiegel steps across. So 426.62, that is the new top time, courtesy of Daniel Brandon. And McCary comes across. Four minutes, 40 seconds. Danny Spiegel was able to get in ahead of what we believe was Kyra Milligan's prior best time of 4.33. Great adjustment there by Ariel Lone. We watch her do a split jerk to finish. This is a great way for athletes to speed the cycle rate when they know they don't have the drive to simply power jerk it. A split jerk is when you step one foot in front of the other, helps you drop your hips down and secure a lockout with your arms. When we return, it's the battle we have been waiting for. Toomey versus Horvath. One will be crowned champion at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. This CBS Sports Spectacular, the 2023 Rogue Invitational on CBS Sports is sponsored by BTWB. Fitness is a journey. And by Rogue. Don't weaken. It's the final event, event nine, the cleanup at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. Here are your lane assignments for this final heat. Tia Toomey and Laura Horvath, they are tied with 680 points. Whoever wins between the two of them will take home the championship. Meanwhile, Gabby Magawa and Emma Lawson, they are tied in points. Whoever wins that matchup winds up on the podium. Couldn't have scripted it better. The race is tight. It's, it's win for the championship, win for the podium. Gosh, I'm, my hands are sweaty, I'm nervous, <laughs> and I'm not even competing. Here we go. Toomey and Horvath for the championship. Magawa and Lawson for the final spot on the podium. 25 double unders to kick us off, then five power cleans at 155. Three rounds of that to start. So 90 reps before you move into the next portion of the event. And Toomey and Horvath are under the barbell at the same time. Everyone choosing to do singles here. Seeing a similar technique to what we saw from Brandon in the last heat where they keep their hands very close to the barbell, but they're letting it drop, letting gravity carry it down. Fast on the transitions is one of the keys. Laura Horvath having a very smooth transition to that set of double unders here. 
Everybody on to round two right now. Laura Horvath got to the jump rope just ahead of Toomey. Emma Lawson, though, towards the front as well. And there go Toomey and Horvath to the barbell at the same time. Now remember, to finish this event, you have to step over your barbell and get on the mat for time to stop. Right now, Emma Lawson is ahead of Gabby Magawa in that battle for third place. And now Laura Horbath back to the jump rope just ahead of Tia Toomey here. And a trip for Horbath as that will allow Toomey to pull even. Let's check in with the Rogue Tailgate team. And I'm going to assume squat-wise that weight is going to be so easy for Horvath. Oh, yes. yeah, absolutely. You know, I think for all of these girls, they won't struggle. And I Gabby's love in fifth in the seat. Yep. I love that Emma Lawson is oh, just surprised us once again. Look at those transitions. This is going to be within a second or two. Laura's so fast on the stand up. No struggle at all. No. Tia Toomey closing out her final rep, and Toomey moving to the jump rope. Laura really doing a great job at breaking below parallel and, and redirecting her body immediately, not taking it too deep and traveling a distance as she doesn't need to go. Make the rep count, stand it up at the top. Horvath back to the barbell. This is her second and final set of squat cleans. Emma Lawson continues to lead Gabby Magawa by a significant margin right now. Final rep for Laura Horvath, and she will move back to the jump rope. Tia Toomey still has a rep left. So Laura Horvath has a chance to really put some distance between herself and Toomey right now. 25 double unders and five clean and jerks for the championship for Laura Horvath, and she leads Tia Toomey. She got a comfortable lead right now that's going to give her confidence as she approaches the bar for these five clean and jerks. Here comes Laura Horvath. One rep in as Tia Toomey just now getting to the barbell. Laura Horvath looking to defend her championship here at the 2023 Rogue Invitational. She is one rep away. Final rep for Laura Horvath, and she is your 2023 Rogue Invitational champion. Emma Lawson is beating Gabby McGowan. Lawson looks to put herself on the podium. What a time for Laura Horvath. 346.61 seconds, and Emma Lawson is in, and that may put her on the podium as now Tia Toomey will finish up, and she gets across the finish line looking to take second place overall. And what a return for Tia Toomey, and what a title defense for Laura Horvath. It is going to be a fun year in 2024. <laughs> Laura had plenty of reserve left here in her power cleans and power jerks. Every rep looked the same, as I'm sure she felt the energy of the crowd and knew she had a lead, which catapulted her to a defending crown for the Rogue Invitation. Send it to Kiki Dixon with Laura Horvath. Laura, congratulations on winning this championship here. It was such a tight race between you guys coming to this final event, winner takes all. What does it mean to you to regain your title of the Rogue Invitational Champion? I mean, it means a lot because, to be honest, after the games, everyone said, because if T is not here, that's the only reason why I won. And this means a lot to me that I can prove to myself and everyone out there who's doubted me that I won because I deserve to be on the podium. So it means a lot. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Laura Horvath, back-to-back -back Rogue Invitational Champion, and she did it in dramatic fashion. Horvath finishes with 780 points. Tia Claire Toomey, only six months from giving birth, finishes 10 points back in second. And Emma Lawson overtakes Gabby Magawa for the final spot on the podium. 2024 is looking to be an epic year between champions Laura Horvath and Tia Claire Toomey. 
Coming up next, the Rogue Invitational Men's CrossFit Competition. Thank you for watching the 2023 Rogue Invitational. For Kiki Dixon, Adrian Conway, and the whole Rogue Tailgate team, I'm Sean Woodland. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports in association with Coulter Ventures and Rogue Fitness.